Joel Schumacher unfortunately passed away recently, and although I'm not one to jump on what's happening in the movie industry right now sort of a thing, I only bring this up because I was disheartened to see article after article saying the man that did Batman and Robin, or the director of Batman Forever, it, it, it never addressed his true masterwork falling down. Batman Forever is not good. It's, it's got Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey, which is great for me. I love Jim Carrey. It's got Val Kilmer, uh, you know, under the cloak or under the, under, under the cape, under the cowl. That's fine and all. Um, it, it's just, you go from Tim Burton and you have an expectation set. This dark, gritty, kind of silly world then becomes this neon city of, of nonsense. You follow that up with Batman and Robin and you have yourself a fun Sunday rainy afternoon of laughing your ass off at how stupid things get. And sadly that's what Joel Schumacher is pretty much known for. I mean his earlier works are actually pretty good, particularly Falling Down. This is a movie I proudly own on DVD, regular DVD, so it's essentially unwatchable because that level of quality has been surpassed you know, three times over now. I, I really need to up, up the purchase and get it, get it on Blu-ray or on on uh, HD digital or something if it even is available. However, I have seen the film probably seven or eight times. I'm not one to dilly-dally on films. I see them once or twice, I'm pretty much good. Falling Down I kept coming back to though because of its solid pacing, great performances, terrific writing, and competent direction by Schumacher. You're not getting this Batman and Robin directing, all right? The camera's not like tilted upward. There's no like Michael Douglas nipples going through the t-shirt. There isn't like neon lights punching through the city streets. No, this is a this is a grounded, gritty drama. I don't want to give away the farm, if that's an expression, but I'll give you a quick synopsis. William Foster, played by Michael Douglas, is at his breaking point. He's sitting in his car, AC stops working, and that's it. He snaps just like many of us have thought about doing, but we're, you know, we're sane enough not to. He, and he just abandons his car, straight up. He's fed up with the way that the man has come down on him. How we've pigeonholed ourselves into this nine to five work week, the 40 hour hustle just to put food on the table. And what does he have to show for it? A kid who he can't see really, and a wife who wants nothing to do with him. After flipping out at a grocery store clerk because he can't use a payphone without buying something, he does get one of the best looking coca-cola classics i've ever seen the can is just gorgeous it's beating down the the you know the sweat the sweat of the can is coming down the side dripping everything's sweaty in this movie i should point that out he's in the hot hot heat he, he's just perspirating non-stop you know he might have some michael douglas nipples by the time this thing's done popping through that tea i can't confirm nor deny that should rewatch just for that. But he trashes the place with a bat in a, in a pretty fantastic sequence, and this is where Robert Duvall enters the picture. Uh, we have ourselves a uh, kind of a stereotypical sequence of events here where, you know, Robert Duvall's, it's the last day on the job, last day on the force. He's just ready to hang it up. He's been working behind a desk. He's put in the time. He's got a thankless wife to go home to who's just honestly the worst. But this is his last ride. This is his last hurrah on top of that horse and he could ride off into the sunset or he might get killed trying. So many memorable scenes in this from the McDonald's-esque restaurant he goes into where he holds up a pathetic looking cheeseburger and says, something wrong with this picture, while in the other hand holding an Uzi. There's a trip to a gun store ran by a homophobic Nazi. There's a, there's a movie being shot at which point he blows up an underground sewer system. All sorts of stuff is just happening and, and I'm loving every second of it. I'm loving every minute of it. This is a Duval, Michael Doug film. If you don't like Michael D, this is gonna change your mind. You're gonna get all the D you want and more. A lot of D coming at you, big D. Schumacher has done some fantastic films outside of this. And just, just ignore the Batman stuff for a while, unless you appreciate what he did from a comical standpoint, in which case, yeah, yeah, he, he gave us basically the best comic book movies ever to laugh at. But Flatliners, The Lost Boys, come on. St. Elmo's Fire. I believe in the hand and known it. I believe in the sun and ten. I believe in seven down to St. Elmo's Fire. Subscribe if you haven't. You're a fool if you haven't. I think we get the point I'm trying to make. Remember the man, not for the bad, but for the good things he's brought to the table. Go out and watch A Time to Kill, which he also directed. And then when you're done with that, come to the perfection that is falling down. Get that D. Get that big D. I believe in the human now.
Danny. I believe in the sun and day. Heaven in my head and down to say I must pray. Thanks for watching the video. I try to put out new stuff on a weekly basis, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I have a second channel full of more shenanigans, and I'm also on Twitch now. So there's a lot of variety, a lot of options, and hopefully you can find these channels via links on this video itself, if I did my job correctly. Otherwise, they might be in the description below, or you can just visit the channel page. All right, take care.